going to say this as delicately as I can. Um, uh, we have to be really careful how we imagine our stories and other people and the world around us. Um, whether that is a public figure, such as Santa, or a private figure like our friends, we have to be really careful about how we think about them. That's what Radar's parents are up to, really. Um, I mean, later in the book, Radar speaks disparagingly of that when his girlfriend points it out to him by saying that he's not interested in thinking about that sort of thing when he's eating his freaking Lucky Charms with his freaking Black Santa spoon every morning. <laughs> but, but it is what they're up to, and it's important work in a lot of ways, and that's what Paper Towns is up to as well. Um, I mean, Black Santas are obviously, I guess, the funniest symbol in Paper Towns, but not, not the only one that seeks to address the same point. Those of you who have read the book know that the book is in an essential way about the relationship between the world that we draw and the world that is, and the way changing the world we draw, or the world we map, or the world we imagine, can actually change the world that actually exists. And that's why we have to be careful about the way we imagine ourselves and other people in the world around us, is because it does have a real and lasting effect on the real world. Um, as, as an example of this, I mean, there are tons of examples of this in the book, because really everything in the book is an attempt to make an example of this. But you know, in an essential way, the book is about a bunch of people who are constantly misimagining each other. That's why the novel has two different covers. It has this cover and then a blue cover that I'm sure if I wait five seconds, someone will hold up. Done. Um, <laughs> and uh, the reason it has two covers is because it's about the sort of essential um, difficulty of imagining this girl complexly. And both of these covers represent inadequately complex representations of her. And so in the book, what happens is that um, Margo and Q go on this crazy all-night adventure through the streets of Orlando, including Q buying 13 pounds of catfish and Vaseline and everything else for their supplies for the evening. And they go on this huge night of epic revenge that culminates with them breaking into SeaWorld, which is easy to do, but I don't recommend it. And then the next <laughs> day, Q thinks that they are going to be friends, or that they are going to have a relationship, or that they are going to have some kind of new and exciting connection, and that Margot has sort of chosen Q for reasons he doesn't understand. But the whole night, he has been missing clue after clue after clue of what is really going on, which is that Margot is saying goodbye. And so the next morning, she doesn't, she's not at school because she's gone. And the rest of the book is Q having to find her, find, it sort of falls to him to, to discover what's become of her, um, because no one else seems that interested in it. And the problem with finding her ultimately, the difficulty the, that all the characters in the book have, isn't so much that Margot's hard to find, or that the, the story of what happened to her is so difficult to puzzle out. The real difficulty is that she is hard to imagine. And like, we all have this problem. Margot's last name is Spiegelman, which is a German word that means mirror maker, and that's, she is a mirror maker. When people look at Margot, they don't see anything essentially true about themselves. What they see is some funhouse mirror reflection I mean, they don't see anything true about Margot, what they see is some funhouse mirror reflection of themselves. And this, uh, this is the challenge that we all have as like readers, as writers, but also as people, is to imagine one another complexly. Like to think about someone else. Whitman, uh, those of you who've read Paper Towns might have noticed that I like Walt Whitman a lot. Um, but Walt Whitman uh, says in, in Song of Myself, I contain multitudes. And that's so true, like we all contain multitudes, but I only know about my multitude, you know? I only know how complex and interesting I am. I'm sure that to you, you are also complex and interesting and the stuff that's happening to you is important and, and, and matters, but it's really difficult for me to get past all of the important and interesting stuff that's happening to me enough to acknowledge the reality of your feeling and to acknowledge that you're every bit of, of, as much a person as I am. This is sort of the central challenge that we have as people, I think, is that we're stuck inside of these skin-encased enclosures. We're, I'm stuck inside of my consciousness. I can only see out of these eyes. And as a result of that, it's really hard, or maybe even impossible, to fully imagine what it's like to be you every day. Um,